You may have seen a dynamic island jumping out at you on your iPhone and wondered what it was. Then you may have tried to use it, and if you're like me, it kind of felt a little gimmicky. But this is really a clever iPhone feature worth getting to know. And I'll admit that it's come in handy for me more than once. Want a few tips on how to use the iPhone's dynamic island? Then stick around. This video is for you. Hi, my name is Rich. I've made quite a few easy to follow videos on how to use your iPhone and iPad. And today's video is all about the dynamic island. Apple first introduced the dynamic island a couple of years ago. And when I saw the marketing material, it looked really cool. But at the time, it only worked on an iPhone 14 Pro, which I just happened to own. And by the way, it now works on any iPhone 14 Pro or newer phone. But for me, other than a couple of taps here and there that seemed to work, I don't think I used it all that much. But then I started messing around with it and I figured out a few things and I've decided to share those with you. So in this video, we'll cover just three main things. What triggers the dynamic island, because it's something called live actions. The most common apps that use dynamic island. And then lastly, how to navigate the dynamic island. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you an app I got off the App Store that supercharges the Dynamic Island. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is what triggers Dynamic Island. Now, if you'll notice, Dynamic Island is up here at the top of your phone. If you have a phone that's got a notch or a different shape than this, you have a phone that doesn't have Dynamic Island. But if you kind of have this pill-shaped black area right there, then you do have Dynamic Island. And when you press and hold on it, you get a little haptic feedback, a tap, but there's nothing going on there. But one of the apps that uses the Dynamic Island is the phone. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to take my other iPhone, and I'm just going to call my phone here. And you'll see that Dynamic Island pops up right there. And I can hang up the phone. I can answer the phone by tapping the green phone icon. I can actually tap and hold on it and open up the entire phone. Then I can hit decline and that will send the message over to voicemail. Just like that. So whenever a call is made, we'll do that one more time. Whenever a call is made, that shows up in Dynamic Island and you'll see it expands to where it covers the whole top of the iPhone and you can see who's calling if you have that person in your contact or if caller ID kicks in. So that's one app that triggers the Dynamic Island. Now here's the thing. What gets the Dynamic Island to work are things called live activities. That's how Apple has identified them. But there's no real way to go into your phone and find live activities. So you can't go into the phone and then go to settings and then go to apps and then go to, you know, one of these phone things like FaceTime, which by the way also triggers um, the dynamic island. There's nothing in here that talks about turning live activities on. So you just get what you get with the iPhone. Now, what got me interested in it and what confused me a little bit is that I got Apple's sports app. And I saw a little clip somewhere on the internet where sports uh, scores would be updated in Dynamic Island. So, you know, if you're watching a baseball game or a football game, you can look up there and get the score on Dynamic Island. And it just stays up there while the game is going on. So I got the sports app right here and I opened it up and here's the Ravens Bills game that was played last night and I got the information but I didn't see the game going on in Dynamic Island so I'm like what in the world is going on so I went into settings I went all the way down to apps I went to sports right here and of all things, it does have something called live activities. And when you tap on it, you have to allow live activities. So this is the part that's a little bit confusing. You have some apps like the phone that just automatically show up and you don't 
have to do anything to make it work in Dynamic Island. And then you have apps like the sports where you actually have to go in and tap on allow live activity. So if you put an app on your phone that's supposed to work in Dynamic Island and you're not seeing anything, then you may need to go into the settings, apps, find your app, and turn on live activities. I know that's a little bit confusing, but once you get the hang of it, you'll see what I'm talking about. So there are other apps that also trigger this. It's not just the telephone that you just saw. Um, you can do a voice memo. So if I go into voice memos, and if I'm in, say, a meeting and I'm just wanting to record the meeting to a voice memo, and I tap on record, and I start talking, you'll see that it's recording here. If I close it out, you'll see that it's up in the dynamic island up at the top. And you can tap and hold, and you can stop the recording if you want to stop it, or you can see that it's going on, and you can see that it's recording my voice. So that's another app that uses the dynamic island. Still another one is music. If you go into your music app, and you start playing some music, like a little Jackson Brown, and you close it, you'll see that you've got the music app playing in the dynamic island up above. Let me turn the sound off. And you can, if you can see close enough, there's actually the album artwork also showing up. If you tap and hold, now you can see what's playing. And you can pause it, skip forward, go backwards. You can even put a favorite. You can also tap on where you want it to go. So if you've got your phone here and you just quickly want to send it over to uh, some speakers, you can do that through AirPlay. And all of that's done through Dynamic Island. You don't actually have to go into the app and search around to do that. I've actually found that pretty helpful. Still another is timers. If you go into clock, and maybe you want to set a 15-minute timer, and you hit start, you can see that it's running here. And now it shows up in Dynamic Island as well. And you can just tap and hold and you can pause it and you can start it back again. This is handy if you're trying to keep track of something in your kitchen or you're just wanting to get sort of a countdown clock, that kind of thing. But it's up in the Dynamic Island. That's another app on your phone that you can use for that. Another app that you can use is Podcasts. If I go into my Mac Power Users Podcast, but here's something that's a little different. If you'll notice, now you've got the timer running over here and you've got the podcast playing over here. And if I tap on that, I can bring up the podcast. And if I tap on the little timer over there, I can bring up the timer. So now you actually have two things that are running in Dynamic Island at the same time. You can have two different things going and you can just tap and hold to get to one or tap and hold to get to the other. It's pretty handy that way. And so the ability to use your phone to receive a phone call or record a voice memo or look at music or set a timer or even listen to a podcast and have all of that show up in Dynamic Island is pretty cool. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is just how to navigate the Dynamic Island. For me, it's a little tricky. I can't get it to work perfectly every time. But here you've got two apps running. If you just take and swipe from right to left, you can bring the timer over into the main part of the dynamic island and then you can tap and hold and you can see it running. But now you've got the podcast that was running and it's gone. If you want to bring that podcast back, you can just put your finger in the middle of dynamic island and swipe down and now you've got the podcast back. If you want to get rid of it, you can swipe it like that and then you can swipe it again and now you have nothing in Dynamic Island even though those two apps are still running. To bring it back you just swipe kind of down like that and it brings back both applications just like that. So you can have a couple of different applications and to navigate around between them you can just swipe back and forth. For me though if both of them are up there I can just tap and hold and bring it up that way or tap and hold and bring up the other app that way, that's a little bit easier for me than swiping around. But that's how you navigate the Dynamic Island. 
Okay, the last thing I want to show you is just this really cool little app. The name of it is Lock Launcher. You can find it in the App Store, and it does a whole bunch of different things. But one of the things it does is it puts apps that you can access up in the Dynamic Island, making the Dynamic Island really useful. So here is the app itself, the little app icon. Of course, it looks like a little spaceship because it's called Lock Launcher. But I'm going to tap on that. And the one thing you do have to do in here, like you did on the sports app that I talked about earlier, is you have to turn on live activities for the dynamic island. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to turn that on. And now it's done. And I'm not going to show you how to set this whole thing up. This isn't a video on that. But it is a video to show you that there are apps in the App Store that take advantage of the dynamic island. And this is one of them. And what I've done is I've turned it on. And now you can see... I've got the date showing up and the little icon for Lock Launcher right there. And if I tap and hold on it, I can bring up a whole series of apps or shortcuts or anything else that you want to put up here. And I decided I wanted to put six different icons. You could actually have three or four or five or six or more, and you can stick them up there. And that's just a handy way to get to applications. So, you know, if you tapped on that and you just wanted to get to the weather, you could get to the weather very quickly, just like that. Again, tap, get to the calculator. Maybe you need to get to the calculator because you're in a restaurant. Again, I like to keep a clean home screen. I don't want all those apps on there. And the little lock launcher application up in Dynamic Island makes getting to those sort of utility type apps for me very useful. Again, I put one up here for a quick note. I can just tap on that and now I'm in uh, a place to put a quick note right there and I can create a new note that quickly. If I'm out and about and I need to write something down, then I can just open up that little shortcut using Lock Launcher. Again, it opens up other things too. It opens up the stock report. You can set up any apps that you want in Lock Launcher. I will just show you this by creating favorites over here and you can add as many favorites as you want and you've got different screens that you can choose. I've only set up one screen right here with this row of applications on it. But the point about this is that this little app takes advantage of the functionality of the dynamic island by allowing you to do a variety of different things in it that you wouldn't normally be able to do. A really cool little app. So what do you think? Is the Dynamic Island something you'll use? I'll definitely be using it with Lock Launcher. Okay, that's it for today's short tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.